there has been quite a bit of controversy this week, Ryder, on the blockbuster scene versus the indie scene, the streaming versus the theaters, what's making money, what's not making money, and all that kind of stuff. I have questions for you that I want, I want us to answer here. These are hard mm-hmm. questions, and there's a lot of debate about it, around it. But yeah. are blockbusters the only things in town? There's a quote that you told me last week at the premiere of The Northman. You mm-hmm. said, what did Robert Egger say about Marvel movies versus his movie, The Northman, let's say? He was talking about the struggles of making a film like this, and he was thinking, like, Universal was like, thank you for giving me the support to make this film when kind of every day all these companies are just pitching superhero films. Yeah. And it was like, ah, I mean, I, I think it's easy to see that, but, you know, I think there were a lot of original creators out there making their own thing, putting them out in theaters, and, you know, well-deserving of support, receiving support from yeah. a lot of people, you know? Exactly. That's so, I mean, there's a lot of, there's, the discussion has been heavy. I want to bring up a very viral video that kind of went around on Twitter this week. And there's a lot, I mean, there were some people agreeing with this take, disagreeing with this take. But if you have seen it, there's a Twitter video going around where this uh, guy is talking to his camera like in a TikTok. And he's... He makes the claim that Marvel movies will continue, Marvel or superhero movies will continue to be the things that are only making money in theater. Like only things making Mm -hmm. money for theaters. They're going to keep theaters afloat, that kind of thing. So he says, let's just make indie films, but connect them to the MCU. He said, he said, let's have (laughs) like, we want to know the stories about just the normal, the normal people, you know, like, and then just Mm -hmm. connect it to the MCU. And that way, if they're branded with Marvel, people will buy tickets and go see those movies. Hearing this, I just cringed, dude. I just cringed because to me, there are so many movies that are deserving of people's money that will not get the, um, Mm -hmm. I don't know, the eyes that they deserve to have on them. Mm -hmm. But I I don't, it's just so, the the answer is not to market with the MCU. The answer is to push these indie movies just as much as they push the Marvel movies, right? Exactly, absolutely. Yeah, and and I think, you know, we saw people talking about uh, it's easy to compare with Marvel since that is the most prominent thing in theaters now. But when films like, you know, The Northman and Unbearable Way to Massive Talent comes out, they're original stories, not yeah. IP. People talk, hey, these these films flop. Their numbers aren't doing good. I blame right. Marvel. It's like, but you have to ask yourself, are, are you seeing it? Are you telling your friends? Are you telling your family? Go see it. Because when a Marvel film comes out, that's what I'm doing. I'm telling friends and family. Yeah. But also the same case is, you know, you know me and I want to use the example of myself because I'm diehard Marvel. Diehard Marvel. Yeah. But I, I'm more of a fan of film. I would support Northman. I'll support right, right. Unbearable Weight. And I go see those and I pay the money because I want those to do good too. So I think that as a Marvel fan, you have to do good to your film and, and give to everything. Because it's kind of like, why would you say there's no post credit scene or this isn't as fun? Like expand your palette. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I agree. There's, I will say there's a large portion of people. There's a large, large number of people that won't enjoy some like marvel movies yeah. are no oh, yeah are so broad dude they try to appeal to so yeah. many people and indie films mm-hmm. don't try to do that they're appealing mm-hmm. to people that maybe like that genre maybe like the indie film scene in general a setting a, a yeah. setting a period maybe a single actor because indie films you know they yeah. like to take one actor you know and then do a lot mm-hmm. of the actor sells the movie sometimes yeah for yeah. those but that that's mm-hmm. their tactics of trying to help sell this movie to get it to wider audiences the answer is not to mark everything with marvel like at all Mm. you know no yeah um i just think it's a weird weird argument uh we were just talking about CinemaCon during this podcast episode as well and just talking about how um like all there's these huge movies i don't want to use northman and unbearable weight as like examples of indie movies because they're not they still have big budgets behind them and big studios behind them but i'm talking more of like like after yang for instance came out and that was a colin farrell movie who's a huge actor you know but that's more of an indie yeah. budget, indie film. Yeah, yeah. Less eyes will see that. But I, I, it's an incredible movie. Like, there's things like that mm-hmm. that why would you want to mark something like that with yeah. MCU just to t- mm-hmm. sell tickets? No. Yeah, like, and and a, a lot of times these indie films have even the way better story, right? They have sure. the better story, you know, arguably. Right, but right, right. you see the you see the stats, and you're talking Endgame, you're talking Infinity War, Spider Man. These are films that are saving theaters during COVID. No way home. Yes, practically saved the theaters. So to its own, I don't want to discount the that. opposite coin. Yeah, you, like you have to see MCU films as what they are. As they're saving the theaters. Theaters could, you know, who knows what world they would be in without releasing those, right? But when there are other films that aren't getting the money, you know, it's like you, the the audience, 
makes the choice. If you're not going to go see it, yeah. you know, <laughs> you got you have to support it to then argue about it or tell people or do your best you can because then it's like if Marvel films are making the money, they're just going to keep making this, you know? I, yeah. I, another thing I want to like bring up to that point too is if if Marvel is like the only thing people are going to the theaters for and like seeing and paying for, mm-hmm. there is no inspiration for people to like look at us. Us, we're going to school yeah. for filmmaking. If we liked, mm-hmm. we liked that, mm-hmm. right? Like I graduated, mm-hmm. you're almost done, things like that. Mm-hmm. Like as much as how cool it would be to work on a superhero movie too. There's so many cool things to work on. You're gonna like, yeah. So you're suppressing so much like creativity and stuff by only doing superhero movies. Yeah. These are going to burn mm-hmm. out, dude. Like, I don't think superhero movies are yeah. for the next hundred years. You're not, it's not going to be a hundred years no. with 20 superhero movies a year. Like, it's not going to happen. It, it's like Westerns. It's going to become yes. a point where yes. people are going to get tired of it. Like, like I, I don't know. Like, I was thinking about Thor, thinking about Black Panther and kind of those films. Once the kind of multiverse story ends, right, with cameos and stuff, people are going to be like, uh, I don't know if I'm going to, I'm going to watch that one. And yeah. then it's going to slowly become more and more like, I'll wait till that one comes to VOD. I'll wait till that yeah. one hits Disney Plus. Right. I'll wait, I'll wait, I'll wait, I'll wait until it gets to a point where we start seeing a downward trend and some of these films, they're going to start pulling back and it's yeah. going to, I don't know, it might be sooner rather than later. You know, it feels like right. it, it might come. And soon. again, I don't <laughs> want this argument to come off like, ooh, Marvel films. I'm going to go, like I love Marvel. I'm going to keep supporting no, it because yeah. I, I enjoy it, right? But we, we love films. We love films in Europe. Yeah, yeah. I, I just, I don't like this argument that, well, indie films have to be labeled with Disney or with Marvel or something to like sell no. tickets. Like, no. If you're interested in them, you're going to go see them. But I mm-hmm. don't think theaters want to push them because they want to push the things that make them money. Whereas I yes. think the real yes. fix here is let's, let's bring the advertisement budgets up for some of these indie films. Yeah. And it, it really comes down to if people are willing to go see these movies or not. But a lot of the time, dude, a lot of the time, it's because people have no idea that these movies exist. Sometimes, like, yeah. you have a conversation, yeah. oh, what's your favorite movie this year? I bring up a couple ones, or someone else brings up a couple ones. I'm like, I've never heard of that movie before. They're mm-hmm. like, yeah, because how would you? How would you? Yeah. It's, they're not like, playing trailers. Pig. Yeah, Pig. You saw Pig. I have never seen anything from Pig. I don't think I've dude, seen anything from Pig. Pig is incredible. Poster. One of Nicolas poster, Cage's you know best I mean? movies. Yeah. Ever. So, you know, it's an example like that where, like, I go see indie films sometimes and, yeah. I, and I, I don't see the trailers. Like, it's like, it's hard. Sometimes they don't show it or yeah, yeah, it's yeah. that small, you know? Yeah. It's, it's crazy, dude. It's an interesting debate. But let us yeah. know in the comments is Marvel killing indie movies? Just kidding. <laughs> uh, we love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to check out the entire podcast, you can check it out on podcast services everywhere or check out the full video podcast right here for members only on youtube.com slash strictly casual. Podcast services is free, by the way. Thank you guys for watching. Love you guys. Bye.